one bucket list dream for Aussie four-wheel drivers. It's a chance to go wheeling in the snow. It doesn't get much better than this if you ask me. Right now we're in the midst of a high country adventure. And sure enough, things are getting wild. Nah, I'm stuck, hey. Eight out of five. I don't think I've ever been that low before. Deep snow, huge climbs, and car swallowing crossings. Oh my god. Dude, I can see a trout through my windscreen, eh? This is lining up to be an adventure we'll never forget. It's getting really cold up here, the snow's getting thicker. But get the recovery gear ready, because one of the four wheel drives is not going to make it. Well, obviously, this is less than ideal. What a song it's like a song. You can't start a Vic High Country trip without a quick stopover at the Jamison pub. Only a few hours north of Melbourne, Jamison is a sleepy little town and offers the perfect place to warm yourself up for what will be a chilly trip ahead. And after we sink a few cold ones and a feed, we get to bed and rest up for what's going to be an epic adventure ahead. Ooh! Oh, how cold is it? <laughs> I wish that heater was working. Australia is not exactly known for its cold climate and it's rare you'll get the opportunity to drive in the snow. But Mount Skeen provides you the best chance. In summer, this place is literally a two-wheel drive road. But in winter, the road becomes four-wheel drive access only. If the weather gods are smiling, this place can turn into a hectic winter adventure. Joining Sean and I is golden ticket winner Kane, who's come all the way from the Northern Territory for the trip. Hey, Jock, got a copy, mate? Mate, I sure do, and I haven't been able to wipe the smile off my face this whole time because we're finally back in the high country, mate. How exciting. Mate, I was thinking the same thing. The fog's just started to uh, come in. We're getting up the mountain a little bit. And if we're lucky, mate, we might even see some of that white stuff. Oh, mate, I am so keen to hook into it. It's been a hot minute since I've done some snow wheeling, and I know Kane's just as excited to uh, hook in and give it a go. With a cold front having just blasted through the region, we're hoping to find a good dump of snow on Mount Skeen. Hopefully soon we'll just start seeing little specks of snow on the side of the track and then you know you're getting close. And before we've even made it through to the main climb, sure enough, it looks like we're in luck. Hey, how good is this? It's a pretty weird feeling. You know, it just doesn't happen in Australia, seeing snow under your tyres. All right. First little sidetrack of the day. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit slippery. How good is this? Let's drive up here, mate. Flex her up. Oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, that's fun. Snow just feels different under your tyres, doesn't it? There's something strange about it in Australia, mate. It's just awesome when you get to drive on snow. We've got a fantastic mix of vehicles on this trip. And first up is Aaron from Mitz Alloy, wheeling a rig which has seen plenty of action in all corners of this country, proving time and time again that the Mitz 79 is up for any adventure. Following up next in the convoy is a legend that you guys haven't seen before, Steve repping the mighty Red Ark Hilux. I can tell you now, that the setup that Steve's got in this rig is going to come in bloody handy in this type of weather. And last but not least is Pete with his Ultimate 9GU. This thing is a weapon and Pete is a local around these parts so he's an absolute asset to have on this trip and can't wait to show us around his backyard. Wow, this track gets so tight up here trees actually growing in the track. Something tells me it doesn't get driven a heck of a lot. Yeah, it's just snug as a bug, this one. If you like your paint job, this is not the track for you. It's not long before the track starts to get pretty sketchy, and the fresh powder in front of us means that it's only going to get trickier. The mountain has had a good dump overnight, meaning we're going to face some pretty wild conditions.
All fun aside, we need to keep pushing up the mountain as there are reports of heavy snow coming, which could mean some pretty deep powder and make for a tricky ascent. Snow driving provides many challenges, one of which is not knowing what lies beneath the powder. And in this case, it's some pretty deep and muddy ruts. All right, this is gonna be a little bit wild. Anytime we need to go uphill in the snow, it's usually a bit of a challenge. Oh, we just made that. Off we go. <laughs> Look at this track. No one's driven this in a while. The snow is all over it. With full noise, the 30 is up and clear of the climb. Let's see how the rest of the convoy manages. Come on, baby! Let's go, we're clearing a park. We're, yeah. we're snow plowing. Come on, there we go, there we go. Just needed to push a bit of snow out of the way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Can't beat a day in the snow, can you? It doesn't get much better than this if you ask me. Have a look at this. <laughs> what do you reckon, Jocko? Mate, unreal. How cool is this? Super, super special, you don't see this. And of course, no snow trip is complete without a snowball fight. And let's just say, some came off better than others. <laughs> I just constantly seem to be smiling from ear to ear on this trip. I mean, sometimes you just gotta pinch yourself because it's an absolute privilege to be here on Mount Skeen, driving through the snow. The convoy is up the first part of this mountain, but as we continue to climb, the clouds in the distance seem to be getting closer and darker, and before you know it, it begins to dump snow. I guess it's as good a time as any to stop off for a quick lunch stop and enjoy the snowfall. I've got to check something here, boys. Is this what I think it is? Toasties, mate. <laughs> Toasties out in the bush. You've got to be absolute kidding me. All the boys were congregating around this vehicle. I thought I'd better go investigate for myself. That's right, toasties are getting cooked up for lunch today. It goes to show when you've got an awesome 12 volt system, nothing is out of the equation. Steve has got a kettle, a sandwich press, he's got an electric blanket, all of the you know convenience of home out here in the scrub. Ham, cheese, tomato, I'm all in. It's crazy what you can run off a good lithium battery and big inverter these days. But with the day getting on, we need to keep pushing up. And with the snow dumping and the weather turning, the track ahead looks like it'll be a bit of a challenge. Oh, it's starting to get real slippery now. <laughs> How wild is this? In case you're wondering, I've got those good years down to about 18 PSI. It's just like driving on sand, this snow sort of stuff. You've got to get those tyre pressures down. The Dirty 30 is looking more like a snowplow than a Super Tourer right now, but so far it's getting the job done and clearing a path for the rest of the convoy. It's pretty wild. It's just no traction whatsoever. But the higher we climb, the deeper the snow gets and the 30 is using every lug on its tyres to fight its way forward. It's just going to be a matter of going back and forth to actually clear some of this snow. It's getting thicker up ahead as well, so you're a bit of a snow plow when you get to this position of the convoy up front. Sean, I saw you disappear into the trees. I could just see snow flicking up and uh, I could hear the 30 on song, mate. You having fun up there? Well, just you said that, I got traction and we speed off the track. Covering fourth gear low range and standing on it. It's just, you sort of make it a couple of metres every time and traction's pretty hard to get around here. At least you're having fun. Once you go through it, it'll probably be easier for us now. Hopefully we'll just be able to glide through in the D-Max. <laughs> well, we'll see about that, Jocko, but I like your positivity. Yeah, certainly have my work cut out.
believe it or not, it's actually getting a little bit warm at the moment. Not too but warm, but considering we're in the snow, um, it's just all that high RPM, and it's sort of over 3,000 RPM, four gear low range, just really trying to flick as much snow off this track as possible. We're making a pretty good goal, but it's once you sort of clear the path, it's pretty smooth sailing, but up ahead it just gets harder and harder. <laughs> this is so much fun. All right, mate, well, if Sean's driver's anything to go by, I reckon this is going to be fun. That thing, that's full noise. Come on, Jocko. There we go. Go on. Go on. There we go. There it is. Come on, old girl. So far, I'm just managing to get the D-Max up this super slippery climb, but I reckon I'm going to need full noise to get it up properly. Come on, Jocko. I thought I'd clear the track for you, mate. Surprisingly still so slippery. It is. I think you might even have to go back further and just get up in the gears, get some momentum going. Yeah, Roger that. Momentum's your friend on these tracks. I'll go down and have another go. Give it everything, mate. Let's stall her up a bit. Come on, have a real go, D-Max. Come on, come on. That's it. Now, the D-Max is running smaller tyres than the 30 and it's got a lot less clearance. But you know what? It's making a damn good go of it for a pretty standard dual cab ute. Come on, get it, get it. <laughs> That's it, that's it. Come on. <laughs> oh, so oh, close, no. mate. So close. Bugger. Once you lose momentum, it's nearly all over. All right, mate. Put your foot down and get it done. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Have Hold a on. go. There we go. Have a go. Oh, I lose momentum. Right, move. Momentum. Power. Power. This is about as good as it gets. Oh, I'm so close, boys. The good news is I think I've cleared the track for the rest of you, but I uh, just couldn't quite make it. There's this last little pinch I can't quite get up. Probably the best thing if I'm to take the 30 down, I'll need to run it myself to get through the next bit, but then Jocko can just winch straight off the back of me. We can continue plowing a track up. You know, it just gets harder and harder. All right, Sean, good for a winch? Yeah, when you're ready, mate. Shouldn't need much, shouldn't need much, shouldn't need much, and I've got a winch up. Well, that's about as far as I can go, but I don't think I'm unstuck. Maybe you can disconnect me and you can have a run and then we'll reset. Yeah, copy, I'll come back. The problem with this type of wheeling is that without momentum, you've got absolutely no chance of clearing the snow but the snow is what's stopping the momentum in the first place. I've had to put my foot down and use all the power the 30 has to offer, and I found a bit of a groove. Full noise, plough the snow, reverse, and do it all over again. We may only be making metre by metre gains, but slowly, we're making our way forward. Yeah, she's loaded right up. It's given it just about everything. snow there is here. This is what I'm driving through. It's just insane. I think I might get the winch out because I'm really stressing out the 30 here. It's in and out of gears, reverse, forward, you know, going through the gears pretty hard and doing about four or five thousand RPM, so maximum bickies. And I'm still not making it up there. Whoa. Remember, you never ever pick on someone who's helping you out in a recovery situation, unless you're in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Fun and friendship. While Sean continues his snowplow duties at the front, we're going to get the rest of the convoy up to him. The Big Mitt 79 has showed us what she's made of more times than we can count. There we go. But it's yet to be tested in this sort of terrain. But with those eight cylinders of tickled Toyota Fury under the bonnet, she's cruising through with minimal dramas. Yes. And Steve, well, he's just stoked to be here. Good on you, mate. Got to dial up the throttle control with an ultimate six. Make sure I'm nice and sharp on the accelerator. Right. Are you good, thing? This is pretty wild. 
I've just put the old snatch beanie on because it's getting really cold up here. The snow's getting thicker. <laughs> we're looking at the bottom of the hill, we thought, oh, there won't be much snow around. It's a little bit early in the season. We were wrong. Well, the snow's just getting thicker as we get further up the hill, so I reckon if we maybe winch from all the way up there. I think so. Well, one of these so. extensions down here, then at least you've got a nice straight winch pull. Hopefully I can just plan as much of this out of the way as possible, <laughs> yeah. and the rest of the crew can get through easy. It's pretty wild, still winching. You can drive a little bit on and off the gas and you'll get through it, but it's pretty hard on the gear. I tell you what, I don't reckon I've worked a winch as hard as this for such a long time. The long continuous winching with a car that's proper stuck really tests the winch. But the Rumba is doing it easy. What a beast. You can see the 30 is struggling for any sort of traction. And even with the winch pull, it's still working hard just to make a few metres each time. Alright, time to give it the old right boot method again and see if we can't clear another path. Back to where we started. Well, when I winched that sort of 20 metres up, I thought maybe I'd be able to drive from there on, or at least go back to where I've winched and have another go. But as I winched, I didn't actually compact any of the snow down, so it's still real hard going. You're going to have to have a few goes before I clear enough snow if we can make a bit of headway. It's going to take a lot of revving and a lot of back and forth, I think. PSI Pete had a good idea. Let some PSI out of the tyres. And um, I'm down at 18, but it's getting thicker this snow, so we're going to go down to something pretty crazy. Probably down around 8 to start with, and we'll see how that works. I'm tipping 5. I'm five? tipping 5. Yeah. Alright, listen to the Victorian local. Go down to 5. I don't think I've ever been that low before. Well, it might sound drastic, but with barely any traction and the snow just getting deeper, I'll try just about anything to get the 30 moving, including chucking some max tracks down to give it that extra push of momentum. Come on, baby. Little kiss. <laughs> bit by bit. We're in the clear, we're up on top, and it's a lot less thick up here. We're not going up a big hill as well, so that is a win. Shouldn't do that, that was cold. <laughs> well, that's absolutely insane. This is some of the thickest snow I've driven in, but it's so much ice which makes it really hard, but the Max Tracks combined with um, tyre pressures down and just jumping on that right pedal made all the difference. Jocko's up next and um, this bit will be his toughest bit where I got stuck. I was here for a good hour and a half I reckon at least. Come on! Come on! Get it! 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 So close. So close mate. Just going to have one more, no more and see what yeah. happens. Oh. Oh, no, that'll be us, I reckon. Well, we gave it a proper good nudge, didn't we, mate? We almost got to the top, but uh, after a couple of goes, it was just not really getting any further than this. And last thing I want to do is damage the track or the vehicle. So Sean's going to hook up the snatch snap strap, and uh, we'll be out of here quick smart. All right, good to go. She's stuck. That felt like that came to a complete stop and you didn't move. Nah, I'm stuck, hey. I got it, I got it. Oh, I'm 
out of the stuck bit. Yeah, where it's coming tight, we're going over the hard bit, which is a bit of a pain, but if I keep have a few goes, it sort of clears it up a bit. I'll get another tug from there, it'll be us uh, clear and ready when you are. Yeah, I'm up, Sometimes that's all a mate needs, mate, a little pull. With the first two rigs up off the climb and clear, it's time for the boys in the back of the convoy to see if they can send it up too. Ooh, there we go. Traction. Although with the path cleared by the 30 snowplow, it's a relatively straightforward climb to the top. And just in time, because the light is fading quickly. It's going all right. Mount Skeen is a must-do track for any four-wheel driver, and what a day it's been. If you're keen to get out here though, it's important to note that access to Mount Skeen in the winter months is via special permission only. The legends at Four Wheel Drive Victoria have made it possible for four-wheel drive clubs to keep accessing this closed road by putting in a simple permit system, which limits the number of vehicles across the mountain each day and keeps local police and rescue in the loop. You can find more info at fourwheeldrivevictoria.org.au and trust me, it's worth the effort. Mate, what an epic day on the tracks, eh? Mate, I was thinking the same thing, like, it's not very often we get to drive in snow, but when we do, and what we came across today is just sensational, mate. I popped the winch out, I've had lockers going, I've full noise. I mean, that's pretty epic if you ask me. It's so different to any other type of wheeling. You think something looks easy, you give it a go when there's snow on the track and you just can't get through. I can't feel my toes anymore, but I've been smiling all day and I know Kane has as well. Uh, it's that time of day. I wouldn't mind trying to get some firewood, a nice big fire, snow camp, and if you do it right, you will be a lot of fun. Oh, mate, it sounds unreal. I think we're going to need to keep warm tonight. It's going to be a cold one. Bring it on. There are plenty of places to camp at the base of the mountain and we found a specky little spot by a river which will serve us perfectly for the night. As usual, the boys get straight into camp setup, but I've got a feeling that a big fire and a couple of cold ones after the day we've just had is the main thing on everybody's mind. When you're camping in a place like this with extreme temperatures, it's equally important to have the right gear for your camp setup just as much as it is to have the right accessories on your vehicle. The nights can often drop below zero and the wind chill can push it well further. So making sure you've got the right camping gear goes a long way to making your trip more enjoyable. Better turn the inverter on, extension cord. Now you're probably wondering why I'd need this out in the bush. Now I'm not too proud to admit, I come from Queensland and cold is not exactly my forte. So upstairs in the old Shangri-La, we've got the electric blanket. Now I'm keeping that pretty quiet to the front of the boys, but I can run up with this system pretty easy, they don't draw much, so I think why not. I tell you what, coming from the very limited camping setup I've got with the Luxies, it sure is nice to have a mitts canopy and a luxurious camping setup on the D-Max. Well, boys, you know, I'm not going to copy Graham right now, but this honestly is as good as it gets. 100%. I'll cheers to that. Cheers, boys. Cheers, mate. <laughs> hey, boys. Cheers, mate. You know, we were in the snow today, wet feet, wet socks. That's why the boots are around yeah. the campfire. Just Close. trying to dry out. We're in our socks right now, and the smiles are ear to ear because, you know, just because it's winter doesn't mean you should stay indoors. You should get out and go camping, and this is good proof. Yeah. You're well prepared. You can come to places like this and guess how many people are around, Jocko? None, mate. It's <laughs> unreal. We've got the whole place to ourselves. Beautiful. Yeah, some epic drives today by all. And Jocko, I'm thinking, mate, the only thing that can make this better. A delicious, hearty winter meal. That's exactly what I've got planned, mate. Outstanding. Well, high country in winter. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. You shouldn't let the fact that it's winter, a really cold outside, stop you from going camping. If you've, got, if you've prepared, essentially, 
you are in one of the best places in Australia to go camping. Mate, what a magical part of the world, and I'm so excited for you cooking tonight. It's gonna be awesome. I'm yep. making like a, a chicken creamy pasta. It's more of a, Yum. a high country creamy special. Yum. <laughs> I love a high country cream. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is turn that one on. This is the best thing about this. You've got two different sides, so it's really easy to do it. You can control the heat. That's I'll mad. I'll turn that up a little bit. I'm gonna put like a little bit of um, olive oil in there. Yep. I'm just gonna get a bunch of chicken out. Oop. A bit of thigh fillet. Thigh fillet. Now, a lot of people would use breast for this recipe, but I, I like thigh. The, the key is basically is to cut these up into basically bite-sized pieces. You can go a little bit bigger than bite-sized. Big expectations tonight, because I've been talking this one up a little bit. This is a real comfort food. Yeah, and especially when you've been driving in the snow, you've got cold toes and wet socks. Oh. That is, is chopped up nicely. Basically, it's gonna salt and pepper this on the board. There we go. Try not to uh, cross paths, if you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, don't cross the streams, Ray. I'm gonna go some Italian herbs, mate, and try not to get your ch chicken fingers on everything. Straight in, I'll give them a stir. So we're browning the chicken off, we're, are we? We're basically cooking the chicken almost to completion right now. You know, I, I have a secret. I have an ace in the hole, so obviously Kane's been riding in the D-Max with me. He's actually a cook. He's a, what do you say, actually He's a, cook. a trained, qualified, Cook. He's a chef, yeah. So, so makes a couple of chefs on this um, trip. He's got a better beard than me, and he's a better cook than you. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the cane show coming up. You know, you know what though? I had a couple of words with him, and you know, we we train in different spots in France. I was down <laughs> in the south, and he was up north, and we never crossed paths. You know, hopefully, you can learn a couple of things tonight. Okay, he's got the water on the boil. That's yep. what we need for the pasta. So that might need to go into those tins, Jocko. Yep. If you can do that. And I'm just gonna start cutting this bacon Ooh, up. That is hot. Keep the juice in the pan. Keep Ju the juice in the juice pan. Juice in the pan. Yeah. Bacon goes in. Oh, look how much bacon we got. We got Yum. so much bacon. You gotta be careful not to put too much of these here, mate. Don't, don't even go there. Don't. Don't That's even go That's a Graham there. joke, and he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> put a couple of mushies in. Just gonna basically put a couple of chilies in here because Graham's not here. We can put heaps of chili in. Exactly right. For a bloke who likes chilli, he whinges a lot. He never, like, he'll, you'll know about it. <laughs> Put a little bit of chilli in, he's like, oh, that's hot. <laughs> Grow up, Graham. You know what? We're going to keep the seeds in the night. I don't normally do that, mm. but we're in the high country, so they're cut quite chunkily. Chunkily? You know what? I'm not making any efforts to try and conceal the chilli tonight. Oh, goodness. Hang on a sec. We're not done yet. Do you want some help? <laughs> I've got this. Some help is sometimes required, but tonight is, yeah. I, I have this. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. This is about as good as it gets, mate. <laughs> now, we're not purposely trying to make this hot. By the time we put it all together, it actually, Cook it out. It actually yeah. won't be that hot. Except Say that I, now. When I put, this, this is the extra hot bit. Okay, okay, that's probably more than I actually expected, but we'll put a fair <laughs> bit in. Okay, that is starting to cook up nicely. As soon as that water is ready, then I reckon we put chuck the pasta in. Have you put a bit of salt in there? Have yep, you? I've salted it. I'm gonna do an al dente check. <laughs> al dente check? How's that looking, Jocko? Al dente. <laughs> al dente? Oh, I've got a late inclusion. I'm gonna oh, put a bunch, a bunch of garlic. Don't over, be shy. Over that. It's, mm -hmm. got, it's gonna be a fair bit of garlic. That's like the all. whole tube of garlic. Okay, right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stir this around. Let that garlic just seep through. The bacon's all crispy. We've got oh, mushrooms, yum. chili. If you could smell what we could smell right now, there's a lot going on. What I want you to do, Jocko, if you could drain a little bit of pasta water into here. A bit more. Few more. That's a little trade secret. It is a little bit of a trade mm. secret. It's a salty little briny pasta water. Yum. All right, if you could drain that out, Jocko, because we're going to have to use that pot in a second. Oh, there's a drain on the side of this lid, dude. Is there actually? Yeah. Oh, that makes it easy. I've thought of everything. Look at that. I'm just going to lift right. that up, chuck that straight on there. Bingo. That is going all oh, into yum. there. Chuck the chicken and give it a stir. Yep. Look at that. In we go. Coming back with a bit of uh, thick and cream, my friend. Yum, yum, this yum. This is where things get really exciting and quite decadent. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah. Far Some out. more than others. Basically, put that straight into here. All of it. Oh, that's a lot of cream. <laughs> oh. Got to chuck a bit of greens in. We're being healthy and we're keeping warm. What else do you need? Whoop. Just You're going to mix that around. That'll, that'll sweat and go down. Yep. I've got cream all over me, and you shouldn't have that. You've been creamed. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you got a fair bit on you. Oh, you creamed on me too. 
can happen when you're working with mates. This is the bit where I'd normally add a bit of white wine, but I don't have white wine tonight, so a little bit of chicken Drank stock it. is going in. <laughs> That's actually looking pretty good, to be honest. We are symbols of health. Here's a looking job, Mate, It is looking sensational. It looks like it's reduced down a bit. It has reduced a lot and it's smelling so good. The cream has thickened right up and now is the time to add the pasta, mate. It's a full pot, that one. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Move it around, Creamy Jocko. pasta. Look at that. Oh, that is absolutely sensational. Well, boys, grab a plate. Yeah, we're on here. Jump in, oh, boys. Yum, 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 yum. Come over here, oh. close next to Papa. Kane needs to try it first, being the uh, actual qualified yeah, cook. Straight yeah, up. Fill her up, mate. Put that straight in my bowl. Um, tell you what, you know what I can taste? Chili. The chilli we put in. I know, <laughs> I know, that comes back to bite you, doesn't it? You, for, you forgot about that. This has got the right amount to warm me from the inside warm, out, It's warming me up. It's warming up my throat. It's making me cry a little bit. It's good. <laughs> I reckon, folks, that is about, what? As good as it gets in the cold mm. climate. Real it's good. spicy from the inside. <laughs> and it tastes absolutely sensational. I reckon maybe get something cold, sit around the fire. And there's enough for seconds as well. Outstanding, mate. I'll be coming back for more. That is, that is so outstanding. Good. There you go, folks. Hope you're enjoying this week's Vic Snow episode. Looks damn cold to me, but something that's red hot is this week's deal at fourwheeldrive247.com. When you bundle a set of Max Tracks and a Snatch Recovery Kit, you're going to save yourself 150 bucks. If you bundle a set of Max Tracks Extremes with the same recovery kit, you're going to save nearly 250 bucks. It ain't going to last. It's only this week, and where do you get it? Balldrive247.com. Mornings are always spectacular in the high country. And whilst it's as cold as anything, there are a few places I'd rather wake up in. And what's better is that Az has got an almighty cook-up going, which should warm us up for another cold day ahead. Yum. Legend. Thank you, mate. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, the boys are getting packed up, so I just thought I'd jump on the VMS and have a look at where we're going today. So, what's cool about this is I've got 25k Vic Topo mats, which are real good. It's a handy tip if you're doing lots of wheeling around places where there are lots of tracks. 25k mats are real good for detail, but coming along here today, we're just camped down by this river. We're going to run along here, up these switchbacks onto the top of this ridge line, and then make our way out. But what's cool, if I jump in here, I can change the contours a little bit so you can kind of see what we'll be climbing in elevation. So we're down here by the creek, we're gonna run all the way up there. Pretty cool little bit of kit. Well, yesterday I had a little bit of a mishap. The old mirror came off and um, just reversed back and hit a tree. Now I can't see much with these mirrors, but without them is absolute nightmare. So a bit of race tape to the rescue, a bit of running repairs, I think. That'll get us out of strife, but it is no set of clear views. <laughs> we'll have to have a chat with Uncle Mike and see what can happen in that 60 series space. But I'll tell you what, it's a little bit low, but let's not be picky at the moment. That'll, that'll get me out of strife for today, I reckon. Whilst we've had a good run until now, it seems as we go to leave, Pete's mighty GU has given up the ghost and refuses to kick over. We're just about to leave camp this morning and Pete's vehicle won't start. Now we just thought it was nice and cold and that's maybe why it won't start. But we're going to have a look at, we think it might be something related to fuel. Um, hopefully it's not too difficult because these are common rail diesels and could be out of my pay grade. Well, we might just go back to basics to start with, I think. Um, try and diagnose that we're getting fuel from the filter to the pump. Uh, if, we, if we know that, then um, that's actually a, a bad thing. If we're getting fuel to the pump, that means that it's something that it could be electronical, it could be um, something a bit more catastrophic, which, which wouldn't be great. Like most modern diesels, the engine in Peace GU is quite complex with a lot of electronics running it. We aren't 100% sure what the problem is, but we reckon it might be fuel related. It could be something to do with the common rail itself, or in the worst case, maybe something to do with the fuel pump. So it's trial and error until we uncover the issue, but so far it's not looking great. 
So this is what's called a mass sensor or a mass airflow sensor. Uh, super important for these modern common rails because it essentially reads how much air is coming in and then it tells the ECU, oh, I've got this much air, I had this much fuel. So if this is dirty, uh, then it can be doing all sorts of things to your engine. It could be running, using extra fuel and stuff like that. It's super important to keep them clean. This may not be the issue, but it can't hurt just to check it and clean it while we're going through it. My compressor's been so slow. Oh, but yeah. Start it. So what we ended up doing, we changed the math sensor. It still wasn't that happy. The thinking potentially it's a little pressure sensor on the back of the common rail. What I ended up doing, it's a little bit dodgy, but it got the engine started. I just pulled this intercooler hose off and sp sprayed a bit of uh, mass airflow sensor cleaner into it, which was just enough to get it started. Then after that, if that pressure sensor is the issue, it's got enough pressure now to keep running. That's our theory anyway. We're probably wrong, but it's running and that's a start. So hopefully if we don't turn it off for the rest of the day, we should be golden. Now, whilst Pete might be up and running for now, we're pretty sure that what we've done is just a band-aid fix and for what could be a much more sinister issue. But we need to keep pushing on because we're really deep in the high country and the only way out is up. Here we go, eh? Let's give it a little go. Oh. You've got to give it a little bit, don't you? I thought I'll just get, I'll just idle up this, hey. So true. <laughs> now it's so slippery. Nothing like a nice little exit out of camp to get you excited and warmed up in the morning. Go, Jocko. Good drive, mate. Good drive. <laughs> Good drive. Might have to give it a little bit more gentle. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs> Forward momentum going backwards. There he goes. There, we there go. he goes. Just needed a bit of heat in the tyres. There he is. Oh. Easy. Oh. 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 What happened there? Oh, oh for the nine. Power. I've never seen the front go up and the back oh, lift out. a wheel I was afterwards. Out. I was out. Oh. We came up here on purpose and we thought, he might go sideways. He made that look easy and then sideways on this bit. <laughs> oh, I did a bead. All right, well, 15 metres away from camp and uh, as has done a bead, uh, there's been a lot of spectacular drives. <laughs> Good start to the day. <laughs> Today's going to be fantastic, Jocko. All right. Okay, this is a little bit worse than we probably suspected. It's a buckled rim, but because it is a steely, we should be able to just give it a good old love tap and uh, maybe just get that close enough because that's actually nearly sealed. If I just put a bit of pressure on it, it's not too bad. If we give that a bit of a hit and just sort of beat that back into shape, this will be fine. It's better than a new one. <laughs> we'll get the job done. Go, Steve. Go, mate. Go. Now go. That's it. Easy. I thought he backed off just a bit too early then. Yeah, but, but it's nah, just nice he, and controlled. He got right into that. Fun little way to start the morning. With Pete's GU seemingly running smooth for now, it's his turn up the hill, and as a local, he's as cool as a cucumber cruising up this one. There he goes. But just as suspected, the issues Pete's been having are back, and Pete's come over the radio telling us the GU has died again. We're going to try the same fix as last time and see if we can at least kick it over to get us off this mountain and a bit closer to the road. Stop firing. Nah. Here's one for you. When the car went to Morton, has it had a fuel filter since it was underwater? Probably not. 
I think it's important to start with the basics. So this might not fix it, but we're just gonna change the fuel filter out. It might have copped some bad fuel, um, maybe a fair bit of water. Uh, might be all blocked up, so let's just eliminate all the easy stuff first. If it gets beyond that, there might be a sensor or something, we might be um, pushing a patrol uphill quite literally. Well, it's not sounding great, but once again, our Band-Aid fix has worked. So we're gonna push on and see if we can limp this vehicle to the top. Let's drive it on limited the whole way. We must have got a little bit of rain last night, so I reckon those tracks are going to be a little bit slippery and we're down the bottom of a gully, so we'll need to go up a long way at the top of this ridge line. Something tells me we're going to have our work cut out today. Now I know we say this time and time again, but the camera does no justice to just how steep this climb is. And with all the moisture around, it's really hard in the mouth stuff. Well, up we go. <laughs> A little bit of moisture on the track, so hopefully we've got enough traction. I hate to be going backwards. So you gonna love that one, Jocko. Good luck with it, mate. Oh, it's slippery already. Hey, that is straight up, isn't it? Fortunately, as you got plenty of cylinders under that bonnet. So pick the rocks and stick to it. There's just something about this big mid-79. Start to love this car. The key to a steep pinch like this is that you don't want to stop halfway. Otherwise, you'll end up sliding backwards at a pace, which is going to make things tricky for Pete. Let's hope the Ultimate 9 GU can make it up here in one go. As always, Pete's a smooth operator and makes it up in one piece. Just. And well, that's it, there she stops. She's not happy today, mate. No. Well, obviously this is less than ideal. We just need to get it back to the road and then we can put it on the truck. But the problem is, now she's decided to spit the dummy halfway up the side of a very steep track and we're only just at the start. It just keeps going up and up and up. So I reckon we've got our work cut out for us. We've still got a good couple of k's of this climb ahead of us, so it looks like at our current rate, we're in for a massive day. We're gonna need to get Pete running under his own steam. Oh there. Ready? No, that's not good. What a song, it's like a song. Our next port of call to try and fix this issue is to use a code breaker to see if the GU is spitting any error codes that might be causing the fuel problem. And would you look at that? It seems that clearing the codes has worked and the GU has kicked over with no dramas. It's always something simple with like, let's like, let's pull the transmission out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do an engine swap. <laughs> Filter and code breaker. Hopefully the code breaker is what it needed. But Pete's not convinced that it's fully done the job and as we cruise through a couple of switchbacks and make our way to the top of the climb, he's still feeling some problems with the big GU. Well, Pete, there was touch and go for a moment there. It was sketchy. I, I thought know, we might have been leaving you for a long-term camp at some stage. <laughs> when, you, when you're hanging on the side of a hill and, and you've developed a fuel issue, it, it's not the place you want to be, is it? It, it really isn't, mate. It really is. Like, luckily, we've had to clear those codes and sort of limp it out, but what's the situation now? It's Well, it's going, which is great, but as you know, there's some big hills in there, and I, Do I, I don't ever. feel comfortable risking it again. And, 
and delaying the trip. So I think peace yeah. of mind, I mm. might take it back to the workshop yep. and um, just have a good look over it. Yeah, it sounds like a plan, mate. If you do get a bit of time, a bit of extra time at the workshop, maybe think about like a Toyota conversion or something like that. But I mean, I'll leave that to you. I'm sure sure you'll uh, make this thing sing better than ever. It's a nice time for you, isn't it? <laughs> it's a nice time. I haven't said anything. I haven't said anything. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, I'll Been stay just running and um, yeah. we'll, we'll catch up soon, mate. Yeah, good on you. Thanks, mate. Thank you, buddy. It's a damn shame to lose Pete, but he's made the right call. And we've still got a couple of weeks of wheeling to do in Victoria, so hopefully he can get the issue sorted and we can meet up with him later again. For now though, we need to push on because we've still got a ways to go on this track, including a couple of big water crossings ahead. Hey Sean, you got a copy? I do mate, I'm just coming up towards this uh, little creek crossing. It looks actually it's flowing pretty hard in the middle. Yeah, it looks like a good bit of fun. I can see on the VMS, it looks like we actually cross it twice. This first one, and then there's another crossing a little bit down the way. So uh, you lead the way in and uh, see how cold it is, eh? All right, in we go. Ooh. Free car wash. Oh, up over the bonnet there. Oh yeah! It's a real deep crossing, but the bottom seems to be pretty solid. But up ahead is the real test, and it's hard to gauge just how deep it is. Which means only one thing. Jocko, high country creeks, that's going to be some of the most fun driving you can do. 100%, that water looks freezing. Especially this time of year, all the snow will start melting off the peaks to actually fill these creeks up. And as you'll see, they'll get a lot deeper than they look. The other thing as well, if you've got a bike in the convoy called Jocko, you're sending him first to test the depth. Oh, that's your, oh, mate, what? if you were to sort of just check the depth of that, because it looks kind of deep in the middle there. Right? <laughs> I, I think you should uh, go in there. Look, it's a responsible for driving 101. Always. Actually, you want me to walk? I think you should, just because. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Jocko, mate, but rules are rules, and no matter what the water temperature is, it pays to always check before you drive. Plus, that's you could do tight. with a wash, mate. <laughs> it's nearly up to the Jocksons. That was a bit... <laughs> that looks pretty cold. I didn't think it was that deep. You said you always got to be sure though. Not too bad, eh, Jocko? Got an innie, that's okay. You're with mates here, mate. All right, who's the next? What do it in the comfort of the old 3030, mate? Oh, that's a good way to clean the truck. Nature's car wash. Let's go, D-Max. Remarkably deep in this vehicle. Oh, easy. Plenty of traction there. Hey, up over the bonnet. Look, Look at that. that. Uh, nice and clean now. There we go. How good does that That's look? That's the way. Beautiful. Hey! That's the way, nice and smooth. Up, mate. Well done. Well done, mate. Let's run it out, little section of track. It looks a bit slippery, to be honest. Why don't just hit second, just in case we need to give it a bit of a point. Maybe second was a bit too much bunty, but nonetheless the 30 is up. The high country is full of unrelenting hills that require spirited drives. <laughs> My belly! With the place always covered in a layer of moisture at this time of the year, the tracks become unbelievably slippery, meaning every drive you do, you have to commit. Otherwise, you end up sliding back with no control, or worse, on your lid. Yucko! Yucko! That was surprising. You'd come up the mound and then just as you're about to come over, you'd have to give it a bit, which is a bit instincts telling you to back off. Never back off. Just <laughs> so I just had to send it into the stratosphere. <laughs> Power! Oh, oh, God, yes, That's a big gear. Beautiful. It 
It's not far before we get to the final crossing of this track, and this one looks to be flowing way harder than the last, and it's a lot deeper as well. But how deep? Well, I reckon Sean's about to find out. Well, you know how we were saying before that you should really walk all across this. Yeah. I disagree with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes it's best just to suck it and see because... Don't try and back out of it now, mate. Take your pants off and get in there. <laughs> should we wait until it gets warmer? Like, a couple of months or so. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back like until November or something. <laughs> it's, it's, without this is cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that saying? What goes around comes around. <laughs> Go, mate. Commit to it. Commit to it. Get in there, big dog. Oh, that's good. Oh. Head under. Oh. Head under. Oh, that's <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> oh, you feel six feet taller now. Oh, my God, that's cold. That's actually like. You know, they say something, I can't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my, my words are gone. A lot of things are gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby gone. <laughs> You'll feel real good in a few minutes, mate. Nice and refreshed. Unbelievable. Happy Frozen. level. Is it driving? Put lead in your pencil. Um, I forgot, mate. <laughs> I forgot. It, it, it's got a lot of flow. This is a really deep crossing, and it's something that should only be attempted by an experienced group of four-wheel drivers travelling in a convoy. It always pays to be cautious in situations like this and send the heaviest vehicle in the convoy through first, which in this case is the camera car. Well, you can see how much power that current has. It's just pushed the camera car downstream and almost off the track. Luckily for the boys, the vehicle weighs a fair bit, helping to keep it planted to the ground. But for some of the lighter vehicles, this crossing may pose a bigger problem. So we're gonna take some precautionary measures. The issue we're having is the D-Max is considerably lighter than the 30, and he's got a lot more power. So what we're thinking of doing is hooking up, yeah, mate. thanks mate, two snatch straps. So we've got a bit more distance between the vehicles, which means Sean will pretty much be exiting the creek while the D-Max is going through the deepest part. So if I do start to float, he can put the power down and pull me out. I'm gonna aim for the high point. All right. All right, for this one, no seat belts. I might crack the window down a little bit too, just so it does go pear shaped. We have to get out. We can. Yeah, look, this is a very deep crossing, so you shouldn't really tackle something like this unless you're half an idea. All right, we're good to go. Yep, just go slowly as is holding all the strap, but uh, I'm ready to go. All right, go on, D Max. Let's see what you got. That's it mate, that's it. Just as we thought all was going well, the D-Max loses traction and the rear begins to float downstream. But luckily, I was able to find some traction and get the front of the vehicle back on track and we're up and out. That was unreal. Nicely done mate, nicely done. Well done Jocko, that was a little light. I was pretty nervous during that one. Dude, I can see a trout through my windscreen, eh? I <laughs> suppose you didn't jump out and go get it. Oh man, that's just a textbook example of why it's so important to be prepared. As soon as I went into the deepest part and the water went over the windscreen, I could feel the back of the vehicle starting to float. That's where Sean took up tension in the strap and just gave him that last little bit of momentum I needed to get through safely. Oh, that was fun. After seeing what happened with the D-Max, Steve has opted for the same approach and has attached his four-wheel drive to the back of the big mid 79. Micah, I'm just going to go second gear. I'm going to twin lock it for all the traction I can possibly get. And yeah, send it across. Send it. Oh. All right, Az, how you feeling, big fella? Mate, I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit nervous. There may be a little wet patch already. <laughs> a little bit of, uh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Um, aim for the, the high side, I reckon. I, I started floating a little bit. All right, Steve, you ready, mate? Yeah, let's do it, mate. There we go, mate. There it goes. Oh, my God. Oh, easy, easy through. There we go. Loved it. That's the way. Thank goodness for the old snatch trap, eh? That was, um, <laughs> the highlights actually disappeared in the water. 
<laughs> oh, wow, what a trip. That's crazy. <laughs> That's all it's on. Put it there, buddy. We got you through. <laughs> <laughs> well, i got to say, that crossing was wild. And the boys are relieved to have made it through unscathed. Jocko, copy, mate. I sure do, mate. Although I keep getting distracted by that spectacular view out my window. Everywhere we go in this beautiful part of the world, it's just stunning. I can't get over it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not wrong, mate. It's a stunning part of the world. A lot of people don't really come here in winter because I think a lot of the tracks are shut, but it goes to show if you know where to go, mate, you can see some stunning parts of the country in winter. Exactly right, exactly right. Do the right thing, get permits, speak to the right people, and look after the place, and uh, you'll be able to check out this breathtaking place in the colder months and uh, get some cool winter camping in as well, which is always a treat. Yeah, right on, mate. Now it's going to turn it on. That's an absolute blast. I've got one more spot we're going to stop in, mate, and um, you'll be familiar with this one. This trip has had everything, but I reckon the boys are pretty keen to clean a bit of this mud off and also wet their lips. And we're not far from Jamison, so we point our noses to the pub where it all began. Well, boys, I reckon first up, big cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, boys. What an absolute ripper of a trip, eh? Hey? Right ripper of a trip, high country in winter. A lot of people will tell you, when it gets cold, go north. I reckon the opposite. Go into the south because how many people did we see on this whole trip? Just us, really? <laughs> yeah. we, we had every campsite to ourselves. Some yep. of the best camping you'll ever do in winter. Now, if you're prepared for the cold, you can get around it. We saw snow, we drove some epic tracks. Folks, do yourselves a favour. Get down to the high country. Winter, summer, spring, autumn, it doesn't matter. Pete made it all the way in till he didn't make it. The and, last little bit. And that's a patrol thing at the end of the day, folks. So <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> exactly, he's not going to talk real tough. Yeah. <laughs> But we'll have a beer for him and um, uh, and to Nissan's. <laughs> I need you to muster power of that beard, mate, to get us through this. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Good start. Go go. Not enough muster. <laughs> hey, a live one. Now this is a little trick as well. When you're dealing with pasta, oh. Oop, don't put that in there. <laughs> don't put that one in. trick you don't want to do. Of course, mate, just don't forget uh, our good mate Pete, who isn't with us at the end of this trip. And one of the reasons we go to the Jamo pub, mate, is to have a beer in his name. He might even be there having a schooner already. Actually, it sounds like it sounds like he died when we say it that way. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Hey, supervisor over here. Yeah, that. mate, just throwing around orders, making sure everyone is working hard. Keep turning, Jocko. Do it harder. Oh, Try harder. He's gonna snip. Do more. Do you want to sip while you're cutting? Yes, please. There you go, mate. <laughs> Not even weird. Friendship. Nine, I'm flat. They got tiny little heads, eh? Like me. <laughs> I'm a big head. I wonder if this footage will get used. Handheld GoPro. I feel like a blogger. Yeah, blogger. A hey vlogger. Guys, back to my channel. A flogger. I feel like a flogger. An influencer. Can... Yeah. Make sure to like and subscribe. Which one a piece snack? You shuckers. You shuckers, bruh. Hope you be a pocket. <laughs> See ya.